when I read your book, um, All Things New, which you said earlier was like the product of over a decade, you know, what God's been doing in your life. And yeah, um, it really changed the way I thought about evangelism, the way I thought about, um, even as I was dreaming for what a church plant in Vancouver, that's what I'm part of here in Vancouver right now, uh, what, what even success would look like. Yeah. Like it really gripped me with a vision that I think God was already doing in my heart, but just an expanded vision and, um, of what it, of what God's doing and what the gospel message is that Jesus has come to make all things new. And, and that's deeply connected to what we're just talking about. Like yeah. the gospel shaping in a city. Um, well, Hey, I won't say it. I'd love for you just to unpack just what I know it's a big question, but just the message of the book yeah. and the vision that's gripped your heart for what it looks yeah. like when things start becoming new because of what Jesus has done in a city or a place yeah. like King's Cross. Yeah. So I guess that there's two strands to the book. There's the message that the story you live in is the story you live out. Um, and therefore it's an invitation of, and I, I wrote it for everyone, but I guess I'm preaching week in, week out to, you know, a fairly young demographic in a global city like London. Um, and, and they're being immersed in a myriad of stories. And these stories are deeply, deeply formative. Um, and those those stories are are influencing their worldviews um, and the trajectory of their hearts and dot, dot, dot. And I, I want to say, look, there's a better story. Um, and if we really live in it, we're going to be agents of renewal all around us. And, you know, back to that Thomas Merton quote, then our lives are shaped by the end we live for. What, one of the things that breaks my heart is, not just outside the church, but inside the church, people don't understand the end of the story. So mm. the kind of stereotype of like, we die, we leave our bodies behind, we ascend to some sort of disembodied bliss where we ride around on clouds and drink Red Bull and sing Here I Am to Worship. Like, I mean, it's it's fun and the royalties will help my brother. Um, but it, it, it's, it's basically not the, the story of the New Testament. It's Greek philosophy. It's been heavily influenced by Plato and, and the dualistic thinking that was present in Greek philosophy that the material world is bad and that the goal, redemption or salvation, is escaping the material world to the immaterial, the, the spiritual world. And Greek philosophy infiltrated the church and robbed us of the glorious end of our story, which isn't us, you know, leaving this world it's god coming down and making mm. his home amongst us um and in revelation 21 and 22 this is the climax of the whole story the ending of the new testament is is the apostle john is writing it down says look as i see god making his dwelling place suddenly there's no death and there's no grief and there's no crying and there's no pain the former things in other words all of the pain and the brokenness of the world you know that that that's left behind and then god sits down as i said before says behold i'm making all things new and in the Greek language, you've got two words for new. You've got neos, which means brand new, and you've got kainos, which is something old that's restored to its former glory. And when God says, behold, I'll make all things new, the word kainos is used. In other words, I'm going to restore everything to how it was in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, when there was no sin, no sickness, no suffering, humanity, fully alive, in relationship with God, in relationship with one another, and in relationship with created order. And, and our story is a restoration of what began in the very beginning. Um, so if that's the end of our story and the end we're living for, then that story has everything to say about banking and the fashion industry and the music industry and the realm of education and the charity sector and family life. And I, I just got frustrated with mm. like a church message, which was more about church growth and the, about the renewal of all created order. I got bored by people talking about your job as a banker is to tell other bankers about Jesus. Like, I want to say like, yes, proclaim the gospel wherever you can. But your role as a banker is more than just telling other bankers about Jesus. It's the renewal of the banking industry. It's fighting cycles that sort of promote greed and finding a better way to manage money. And those in education, it's not just about getting grades and rating people. It's about developing children that can flourish and grow in wisdom. And, you know, fashion isn't just about exploiting people. It's, it's about beauty and promoting beauty and dot, dot, dot. And I kind of felt like the church wasn't in these conversations mm. about, you know, 
seeing beauty break out. I felt like if you wanted to be in that conversation, you'd go to Ted. And it was like, oh no, no, but we've got, we've got a narrative that if we live in, we'll live out. And that narrative is about the renewal of all things. We should be at the forefront of those conversations. Um, and that's really what the book's all about. Hmm. I love that. I love that so much. And I know that's really shaped, um, like the, it's shaped your church. Like it's shaped yeah. where you guys put energy and time. And I wonder if, if practically you could speak to some of those things. I think about like even, I don't know if this is still active, but you know, part of your story has been having a co-working space and yeah. the way you've participated early on in the story. I know you partner with like commander of the police department yeah. and different things. And like, as you've actually tried to live into that story, what does that actually look like boots on the ground as you've tried to actually invest the limited resources of a local church yeah. and the people? Yeah. So I think it's, it's the understanding that the best way to redeem culture is to create culture. Um, and, and therefore recognizing that if, if in church that we can create businesses or ministries that contribute to the culture of King's Cross, then that's, that's one of the parts we're going to play in the redemption of the story. So in, in the book, I basically talk about a summary of the whole narrative is creation, which is the Genesis, you know, kind of beginning, decreation, which is created order unraveling through sin and talk about the ramifications of that. And then the final part is recreation which is obviously the story of Israel that's fulfilled in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus that ends with this Revelation 21, 22 kind of climactic moment. Um, and then Jesus fulfills that story of creation, decreation, recreation. You know, it's the creator who steps in to the decreation, to the mess. So the incarnation is the first move towards redemption. Um, and then right in the middle of the decreation story, you have the cross. All of the sin that led to created order unraveling is loaded on Jesus at the cross. The so sin is dealt with. It is forgiven. It is overcome. And the resurrection points towards recreation, like new life breaks out. So if the way that Jesus fulfills the story, essentially incarnation, cross and resurrection, that should give us a framework for cultural engagement. So mm. firstly, incarnation, which means in flesh, we step into the pain. So we don't stand at a safe dif distance. We basically draw alongside the, those that are hurting most. You know, that should be the church's response in this crisis around race. How do we draw alongside those that are hurting most? And how do we listen? Not jumping to try and be the answer, not just running towards activism, you know, to, to help ourselves feel better about the situation. Let's actually weep. Let's stand in the pain. Um, so before we stand against culture, we need to stand in culture. And then as we stand in, actually, that's where we begin to, you know, live out the message of the cross um, and be advocates for proclaiming the cross as the pathway to human flourishing and standing against the evil and injustice that we see all around us. And then the final part is, is the message of the resurrection is, is, yeah, we need creativity. So I use the language of compassion, that's the incarnation, courage to proclaim the cross and then creativity. So we've said to the church, it's like, okay, what would creative expressions of the kingdom be? And you've mentioned one of them, which was this co-working space, which like when Google and the other big guns moved into King's Cross, like affordable workspace, like the rates just went nuts, right? So we were like, mm. okay, what if we create a space which really affordable and where startups and freelancers and creatives don't have to work in a coffee shop or in their bedroom where mental health issues become a real factor. But what if we create a space where they can afford to work and we run this space on the values of the kingdom, generosity and kindness and compassion and collaboration. So they're working in a space where they're kind of marinating in a kingdom community. Um, and it just creates incredible opportunities to talk about Jesus. You know, mm. so when people often say to me, like, well, can you explain, like, I don't really understand the Christian message. And I say, we well, see this co-working space. Well, we built it out of waste furniture. The whole building we are in was a rundown, you know, building that was like in disuse. We took it on, we, you know, recycled whatever we could. And we, we created an office where people could thrive. And it, that story of restoration, redemption, it's an outworking. It's a prophetic sign to the story that we believe that we inhabit as followers of Jesus, that God doesn't stand apart from brokenness. He enters into it and he creates something beautiful where people can thrive. And that's possible through the cross. And what we've done with this co-working space is what we believe God's doing for all of creation hmm. and all of humanity. And you can see people think, ah, you know, 
I get it. I, I didn't know that. I thought it was about escaping Earth to sort of like ride on clouds. Like that's a different story. And the answer is, is a different story. It's a far better story.